everyone, welcome back to Cowabunga Corner. In this episode, I am talking about the Shell Shock Art Show that happened in Philadelphia in June 2011. This event was held over at Brave New World Comics in Philadelphia on 2nd Street. They have this nice little gallery when you walk in the door, and that's where the show was, and then you go into the comic shop. Now, sadly, there wasn't much Turtles for sale there. But you did have a lot for sale in the show and free pizza. Check out our coverage of interviewing some of the guest artists and the person behind the show here. In June 2011, there was this awesome Ninja Turtle art show called Shell Shock. This was held by the Autumn Society and it was in downtown Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We had artwork. We had turtle fans. We had pizza. It was a great event. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I got to travel out there with Phoenix. And when we got out there, there was so much going on with fans checking out the different art. You had all these different characters like Bebop, Rocksteady, and Krang. And one person even made Ninja Turtle little plush dolls that was being sold here. All the artwork on the walls was for sale. If you looked at the number, you could find who did what drawing and how much it was going for. But really, it was just great to be there and get to see all this fantastic artwork, all different shapes and sizes, and people just crowded, very, very crowded into this area to see these artwork pieces that hung upon the wall. You also had a little newsletter thing that you could get that had some awesome artwork inside of it, a bit of a Krang story. And you had pizza being delivered. We had a huge stack of pizza that disappeared the minute it got there. And we had these pizza boxes that had samples of the different artwork inside of it and little buttons. It was, there was always something interesting and I tried to cover it all. We zoomed in on small print so you could read it. We started to pull back so that we can look at the different type of things around us. But mainly what I enjoyed was the crowd. If you looked at what was going on here, this artwork here brought in so many different people. So we have our steampunk Donatello in that picture that we just passed over. Some pizza. There was lots of pizza. There was one Michelangelo box with a, that was a pizza box with Mikey on it. So uh, we had so much fun stuff. It was a lot of different art styles and I enjoyed that most. I thought, wow, different art so people can see what's going on in the fandom and learn more about the fans by doing so but there was so much more to this once going outside there was a nice little surprise around the corner as a turtle van actually showed up and I'd like to share an interview with the designer of this turtle van that brought it all the way out here for shell shock so sit back relax and find out about this very cool very, very cool collectible piece in a collection. One of the pieces that came here to show is this wonderful turtle van that we've been getting some footage of, and you are the creator of this van. Yes, yeah, that's me. Uh, my name is Brittany Schneck. I'm from Johnstown, PA, and um, basically I just always wanted a turtle van. This is my third vehicle. Uh, I bought it for 500 bucks and fixed, fixed it up while I was going to school and working part-time. People seem to love it, so I guess I did a good enough job. <laughs> now what got you into Ninja Turtles? Um, they, I used to sit whenever I was young enough to actually physically hold up a pencil, and I just would sit and draw them. I just loved them from the very beginning. So. That's fantastic. You did a great job on this band. How long did it take you? It took me about 10 months altogether. About 10 months? Yeah. I squeezed in every little bit of time that I could up with to work on, so outside of class and outside of work. Now, to do this much work, like on the car door and stuff, you got some experience with cars in your history? Yes, my dad has owned his own garage for 40 years, and um, ever since I was old enough to safely go down and work with him, I have. I do body work on the side, and um, I also detail cars. So, it was, I don't want to say it was easy, it was very time consuming, but the process was easy for me to get 
figure out how to mask everything and spray it and color it. Do all the graphics by hand. So. What was the hardest part for you? Probably the planning. The Just plan. to make sure that I did everything in the right order so I wasn't doing extra work on the top of what I'd already gotten done. That's probably the hardest part. Now, I remember seeing on a website you were inspired to use this sort of van because of a contest uh, on a flyer for Ninja um, Turtles. Well, that and also um, my uncle, he used to chase me and my cousins all around everywhere doing the voice of Shredder. And um, he always would drive us around in a caravan. He had, I think, an 89, it's an earlier one like this. But, um, so I just remember having the memory of the caravan, so I figured that's what I'm used for my van. You got a favorite turtle? Probably Donatello. Donnie? Well, this is the kind of stuff that he would be working on. Exactly, yeah. He, he was the one that made the van, so. He designed the original <laughs> turtle did. van. Not too many people follow the footsteps and make their own. <laughs> it was fun. It really was an enjoyable experience. Definitely. I wish I could make another one. Maybe someday I will. <laughs> I can't afford to. I'm, I'm very impressed. Now, how much did this end up running you totally after getting the band? You said about $500. But after working and getting all the paint and stuff, is there a total amount that you ever figured out how much that cost you to do? I didn't think I wanted to. <laughs> I really didn't think I wanted to. I just spent as I made the money. Um, you know, school books and gas and everything came first. And whatever I had left over, that's what I put towards the paint. Mechanical stuff as well. I mean, it's got new head gaskets, it's got new plugs and new brakes and all kinds of stuff. So, it runs good too. You know, the pictures of this go flying around on those boards. And that's how I saw the link at one point. That's I was neat. like, hey, I'm going to check that out that's and excellent. see if. And also I've seen them like fly around on Facebook and then Ninja Turtle groups on there. I've seen that, definitely. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of went viral for a bit when the, the link went out. Wow, I couldn't believe it. I got emails, I got all kind of stuff. I see. this is amazing, you, you know. Make. I didn't know this many people would really like it, so. Do you have a favorite media of the Ninja Turtles? Is it the original cartoon show, like your band? Yes. yes. Yeah, that would be my favorite. I mean, I have collectibles from each of the different you know, times, I guess you could say, but yeah, this is definitely my favorite. I, I couldn't really, at first, whenever I was trying to decide, I didn't know if I wanted to make it look like the toy, or if I wanted to make it look like in the cartoon, but I figured this would be a lot more fun, because it had a lot more different things on it, and the toy, the toy had the different colors and all that, the one in the cartoon was mainly all just plain yellow and gun and silver. Yeah. So I figured this would be fun. This one is a lot of fun. It was very cool to see. Thank um, you very much. With a car like this, I would be so scared to park it outside. You got a garage to keep this thing safe and that um, you mean, or are you in a safe neighborhood where you feel secure? I'm, I'm I'm in a pretty safe neighborhood. I'm I'm really happy with it. So far nobody has ever messed with it, thank God. But yeah, I just try to keep it out of the way. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you there. I don't really drive it in the snow. Just try to keep it nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very, very much. Yes. We're just having a complete class talking with a lot of turtle fans, and I bumped into one that is an actual viewer, Calabunga Clutter. So, you did one of the video replies for us. Yes, I did the one where you did, uh, talked about the coming out of our shells. Turtle uh, 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 That is one of our uh, great, you know, free quick replies. We've got a couple ones on that one. So. Another one right after yours was put up. Oh yeah, and I was surprised I got thumbs up. I thought I looked like a dork on video, but I'm oh. not a dork. No, no, you look awesome. You did a great job. Thanks. So how did you hear about Shell Shop? I heard about this at the last minute. One of my friends know, knew I was a huge turtle fan, and she didn't tell me until, like, I saw on her Facebook page of the advertisement on Facebook, so that's how I heard about it. At the last minute, just randomly looking, so I'm disappointed in my friend. She did not tell me, and I'm like a huge Ninja Turtle fan. Now, are you following us on, you are following us yes, on Facebook. Of I posted sorry. it up there last week, too. I know, see, I've not even checked it up on my Facebook. I found. <laughs> uh, oh, oh yeah, can I say one of my other favorite videos was when you had the, the Ninja Turtle meeting. Um, 
another we had so much going on so many people here it just kept busy and it was something that I really really wish I could have stayed longer to enjoy it is going fantastic still lots of people just buzzed around us and uh, it's not even near done yet um, right now I'm with one of the artists and it seems to be one of the guys running the show so can you introduce yourself to our viewers uh, I'm Edwin Vasquez um, I'm not I don't I didn't design the show, that was children. I'm just one of the participants involved in the show. Well, it seemed like you were helping with the setup. Yeah, I was just helping out earlier today. You know, whenever he needs me, I'll, I'm there for him. Okay. How many art pieces yeah. did you do for the show? I did two pieces uh, on scratch board. And one of them was used for the special edition silk screen pizza boxes that they were offered to me. That's really cool. Uh, how, uh, are you a turtle fan? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the turtles have been a huge part of my whole life. Um, some of my first toys, um, just yes, everything about it, the movies, the cartoon, it's just uh, the music, it's just always something new. Oh, the music! What do you think of the coming out of the shell store? Oh, actually, unfortunately, I didn't get to see it when I was a kid. I wanted my parents to um, take me so badly, but I was, I was not able to see it. It's on YouTube. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. It's silly, but it's fun to watch. Yeah. Who is your favorite turtle? Um, it's changed. It's changed a couple of times. When I was a kid, I, it was Raphael. But as I've grown older, it's, it's Leonardo. Oh, the serious leader type. Yes. Yeah. Um, which of the medias is your favorite? of the Ninja Turtles. And which one introduced you to Turtles? It was the cartoons. Uh, the, the, the original cartoons that came out in the, like the late 80s or so. Um, those, those are, that's my favorite. I, try to, I hunt down all the, the cartoons for, and I try to watch it over and over. Have you been picking up the DVDs of the original series then? Yes. Uh, we, we've been fortunate with some of those to have interviews with uh, actors and stuff like that on those. So I, I do like the DVD sets that have come out. Uh, do you have any favorite art, sh uh, art pieces up here at the show that's not your own? Oh, uh, I would have to say John Vermilia. John Vermilia, uh, he, he, he's not on the wall. He's, uh, he's in a limited edition, so screen, and he also, he's also uh, 
as a limited edition so it's all for ten dollars newspaper of some of the characters and its own little storyline that I've involved in. It's probably my favorite piece I've ever oh, Huge fan of this. So, look for you. And how many of these artists have you met? Oh, God. Um, I, I don't even know. There are from time to time, there's Amon, there's Matt, there's Shogren, um, Alex. Yeah, there's a lot of people I've met on this one. Well, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. And have you done any menstrual events other than this? There was another show that they did earlier on. I think it was, uh, it may have been a year. Uh, Brave New World was also a Ninja Turtle show. That was part of that. Okay. Uh, okay. If you, uh, I mean, I'm going to definitely check out your, your video blog. And if there is anything Ninja Turtles related on it, I'm going to be on that. Let me be a part of the show and turn power. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. This crowd just kept coming and changing as there was different people. But as you've been seeing in these interviews, we've also had a lot of the artists come through so you can meet some of the artists that had their artwork up on the wall. And this made it even more fun for those people who were there to enjoy the event. It was very impressive to see this big of a turnout at the show as we just had to squeeze our way through if we wanted to see any of the artwork up close. We had to make sure that we got in there to try and look at it, all the artwork because the art was so detailed that if you just took a fast glance from the background towards the art, you weren't going to see everything in each of those drawings you were going to see just the massive amount of artwork there. So with the Turtle fans extremely enjoying ourselves, I mean, we were laughing, we were talking, we were getting to observe this artwork. It was something worth being at. And I'm hoping that the Autumn Society do more Ninja Turtle shows because as you can see, people had different ways of doing the artwork to make it just pop out, stand out at us. There's that pizza box I mentioned. <laughs> and it's just so much on my mind. Uh, it was a full day as we got there in the morning and watched them set up. We stayed throughout the day and got as much video footage of these displays as we could. The problem is there's so much to share that I'm wondering if I missed anything because it was disappearing as fast as the crowd was arriving. Some of the artwork was being sold while we were there. The dolls disappeared kind of early. And it was great to see so many people wanting to take part in this, wanting to have their stuff up on display, wanting to own this artwork. And some of the artwork in there is by some artists, well at least one artist, did artwork for this that has also been known to work a little bit on the new Nickelodeon stuff. So you never know who's going to be mixed into the crowd of fan art. Because, yeah, there's a lot out there. And this was a great example of some of the good artists that are out there who can put together some good artwork. It was also really fun to see all the retro stuff. There was a lot of artwork based mainly off the old cartoon series. And here and there you would find different styles. You saw some of the Mirage Turtles artwork. It just kind of expanded into its own world of art and that made it so enjoyable to be able to take in. And I'm saying that again and again because it was. I, I had a blast there. I enjoyed meeting so many different Turtle fans. I thought this was a brilliant idea. And why only hold it in Philadelphia? Let's get this show on the road. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of Turtle fans who wanted to go to this event that could not make it because of their locations and traveling is not easy for everyone. And this is why we're doing this show so that you can see it. Even if you did not make it, you can still see 
all the great artwork that was there, all the work that they put into the show was just really, really brilliant. And I'm hoping everyone is enjoying that. Uh, this was also covered on Cinemassacre. They had their own coverage of the show with interviews with each of these people. So make sure to check out their site as well. We got a small interview with them. That's already up on Cowabunga Corner. Been up since last year. But this here is just covering the show as a full ongoing show. Showing all the different things besides for the interviews getting to share this artwork and we have a lot of great artwork to share here so here's a little bit more from those there at Shell Shock. enjoy right now I'm here with one of the artists who did a piece that I really like on this wall uh, Michelangelo which is right over here I'm Casey Tanato oh, are you a Ninja Turtle fan? Yeah, I like them. Not like crazy like everyone else, but I do love well them. Oh, that's really cool. How did you get involved with Evan Brown in the show? Um, part of the Autumn Society. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite turtle? Like my turtle. Ah. Although I think Don Cole is my favorite growing up because he's Michael and Joseph would have yeah. I'm a Mikey fan, but Donnie's a close second. Uh, what of your, the media uh, is your favorite media that came out? The cartoons, comics? Um, cartoons. And with all, all the pieces here, do you have a favorite besides the one that you did? I haven't even seen them all yet. I've only seen this section. So <laughs> it's insane, isn't it? Now, are you from the area? I'm from New Jersey. You're from New Jersey, you're Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> but uh, just wanted to say hi real fast. You did a great job on the Michelangelo video. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to say hi to the viewers. As the artists are there, the artwork is around, everything is just booming, and it stayed that way all day long and I love this one right here these are these Ninja Turtle cats what would the turtles look like if they were cats and well what would happen to poor Splinter so, <laughs> oh that's what would happen to poor Splinter uh, <laughs> the, there's just so much different type of art that you get to look around and get a good laugh out of uh, there's these wonderful pieces up here you can see uh, just one style after another which is why this was something you had to see with your own eyes as much as you could and you never knew who in this crowd was one of the artists that did something on the wall unless you overheard someone talking or you were introduced to them it was a surprise to learn oh here's this artist or this artist here's this and this and you just got to see so many different things um, my question is, how many people have actually got to go to the show, got photos, or even bought the artwork? Share what you got in our comment section, because I am sure that a lot of people did go to the show and a lot of artwork is sold. It would be fun to hear from the buyers. And fun to hear from some of the other artists who we were not able to interview. So, if you were connected to the Shell Shock show at all, and uh, would like to share, please do so down below. We like comments. And we have so much more still to share. As the day drew on, I kept that camera rolling and was going around and saying hi to as many, many folks as I could. As you got to see their art, you wanted to talk to them. You wanted to see what else they had to offer. And many of these people with this art have a story behind their artwork or have a story behind their fandom. How they got involved with the Autumn Society, how they got into artwork, and just how they got into Ninja Turtles to take part in this show. It's fun to learn this stuff, and that's what I was out to do that day. As we went around and poked at everyone and ate pizza, it was a very fun time to see where and what, who, how, and why. And some of the interviews, they were just fantastic. And I have to thank everyone 
who took time to talk with us from Cowabunga Corner as we have so much more still to share amongst the fans, for the fans, and uh, I'm hoping that we get to see more of these shows. It was surprising to me, though, that with all these fans that were coming, most of them are not people I know online. So these were all new faces for the most part. We did have some Cowabunga Corner fans here, as you saw in one of the interviews earlier, people who did know who we were. But it was fun to meet so many new, fresh faces and get so many new interviews. There's the papers on the table there as we go towards our next interview. Check this out. Right now, we are actually with the guy behind the show, Joe. Hey, how are you? Uh, yeah, I'm a big Turtles fan, and uh, you know, I'm just kind of always wanted to do a big. When the 25th anniversary came by, like two years ago, I wanted to do this show originally then, but ever since then, I've just kind of gotten this yearning. I was like, you know, I saw Brittany she Schneck uh, did build her turtle van, and she was in PA, and uh, you know, and all this big like turtles resurgence has been happening recently. And I just kind of like, yeah, this like, feels right. Let's let's do a big epic turtle show in Philly, and uh, now we're here. So yeah. It, it's looking great. It's been Thank busy you. all night long. <laughs> Crowds of people just walking right through and checking out all the artwork. I haven't seen a lot of them and been selling too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have this exclusive pizza box for tonight. Uh, don't have one on me because they've been selling like pancakes. Uh, but basically, we've been trying to give back to the fans, give them something a little bit more exclusive. And you know, we're kind of hoping that it kind of it shows people out there, people that are in charge of the turtles, that we're very interested in, that we want to see something, you know, with with a lot of love and care back, uh, giving, giving back to us, so, yeah. Yeah, we really hope so. That's, yeah. That's how the journal started off, you know, it was yeah. just a comic book, and a lot of people coming in there, and he's doing their taking, and all these other people did it in guest spots in the comments. Right, right. So, right, right. they were always an independent about, movement, right. I mean, yeah. this, this entire blog, this entire blog thing has been an, an independent, like, publishing. It's because people have a love for it. They're, you know, like, you guys are covering it, and a bunch of other people are covering it. And it's, then, actually, you know, they're, it's all over the internet, so the internet's your best friend. <laughs> oh, yeah. For, for an independent person nowadays. So, I mean, uh, we're here. It's, it's great. I mean, and you, if you take the camera and you look in there, I mean, it's crazy. So, <laughs> uh, sorry. Now, you Go do ahead. a lot of other shows with uh, a lot of society. And... Yes, yeah. I'm just one of one of the runners. I, I I'm kind of sort of like the the captain of the ship. But uh, the Autumn Society was sworn by uh, Sam Heimer in 2006, and I I'm just kind of one of the co-founders. So I just kind of does a lot of the pop culture shows. Uh, but we also do a lot of other artsy stuff. Uh, but we we like to we like to. We, I feel like our generation is a generation that is represented by a lot of pop culture stuff. I mean, we grew up, I feel like we're kind of sort of like how the 50s was with all the retro sci-fi stuff. We're like the 80s, the 80s generation like had so much amazing stuff that reverberated from stuff from the 50s. So I feel like, you know, I don't know, we're, we're special and we got to represent ourselves. So, yeah. Now, do you guys do show mailing just here in Philly or do you guys cover all the United States or what's your coverage in doing our shows? We started here in Philly. This is actually uh, our main, this is where we started. This is uh, our main gallery, Brave New Worlds have been great. This is like our 10th show with them. And basically through through all the through all the publicity on the internet and everything that like we've got invited to do shows in LA. Uh, we're doing our first international show this year in Mexico for Day of the Dead. Uh, That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we might have a video game show in France. So now, how can people sign up to be part of the Autumn Society and so many not? Really, really simple. You go to our blog, uh, you contact us through email, you send us a link to your website or portfolio or sample pieces, and then we'll get back to you and we'll talk. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, easy as that. So. Um, now, do you have any favorite art pieces that has been brought uh, here for no, sale today? No, 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 no. <laughs> I can't pick favorites. Uh, all these artists I pick because they're all different in, in various styles. Um, there's some that stand out in this show that I really need. Uh, one of them um, is Bobby O'Hurley, uh, who's a good friend of mine, but he just like knocked him out of the park for, for this show. Um, I personally will, would have liked to do, have done more, but because I'm running everything, I didn't have time to do enough pieces. But uh, I'm trying to think. Did you do any of the pieces here today? Yes, I did. I did the turtle portraits with the Japanese, with the Japanese names on the side, um, and I also uh, go under a different alias. I don't know if I want to give this up on, on an interview, but I have another artist alias uh, Way of Pisco, 
and I did these wood wood block pieces uh, here in the corner. So um, those are really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Those are cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, uh, and you know, we have over we have over 80 pieces in the show, and you know, and it's uh, it's something to be really excited about. I mean, it's it, it's all about bringing the people here, and it's about the experience. It's about the moment, you know. And uh, hopefully, you know, we'll be uh, checking this out five years from now. And be like, oh yeah, that was Sorry. awesome. Sorry. Oh yeah. yeah. That, because this has been a lot of fun. A lot of people have come. Now, have you met anyone here that you wanted to meet before that never you. came up? You! Oh! <laughs> Thank you! Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you and uh, else, uh, that I meet tonight, that was, uh, that was great. Uh, uh, from the show, I heard I heard back from Jim Lawson, uh, Steve Levine, and a bunch of those guys just saying, like, you know, congratulations, good luck, and they were, like, super stoked for us, and uh, it's just great to get, like, support from all the Turtle community. And, oh, and Brittany Sh uh, Schneck, uh, I hope I'm not butchering her last name. Is this Schneck? Uh, sorry, Brittany. Uh, her her turtle van is amazing. I mean, that the fact that she drove four hours here to Philly to display it was just absolutely great. So, yeah, I mean, I mean this show is going to be unforgettable. So, I yeah. mean, for Philly. <laughs> so, but, uh, it's amazing how well it, uh, this has been just. You gotta squeeze through the door just to get in there, and then go luck getting up there to look at the artwork. Yeah. Was any of the pieces here that was sold uh, something that uh, there was more than one person going after? Yeah, there were a couple. There were a couple pieces uh, like um, Glenn Brogan's piece number one. Glenn, uh, Glenn is just like an absolutely fantastic artist who who I I love very much. He's a very nice, very amazing person. But I also he's like artistically, he's like I always like oh he's so amazing. I just like makes me want to be a better artist. And uh, his piece, everybody's been wanting to get a hold of that piece tonight because I mean his piece really just like focuses. You saw it right? It's like all the all the, it has all the tur all the characters and the turtles getting sucked into the UFO and all yeah. that stuff. It's just absolutely amazing. We actually that was. Was the first piece we hung, and that's that, that was like the centerpiece that we laid everything around. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And there's been a bunch of other pieces. Uh, uh, there's a couple of turtle shells in there. Oh, the plushies. Uh, Carla Jane's plushies have been doing really well. Um, what else? Uh, we have John John Berlamia's uh, uh, Pizza Time uh, zine, who, which is very, which you know we've made exclusive for this show. Uh, yeah, I just yeah, there's no excuse. Cool stuff, this so. can't be like. That's yeah. awesome, and it's good that you got uh, some confirmation Shane from the Mirage Lola guys. Lola. Congratulations! Yeah, on this yeah. Show. I would have loved to hear, hear, hear from Peter, but uh, maybe someday. Someday, uh, yeah. they'll post the guys at Mirage yeah, yeah. since the mid '90s, and yeah, it's, cool. it's good to know that you've been able to. Yeah, actually, Jim Lawson. It was my favorite growing up because I, you know, the Turtles uh, sound book. Yeah, the, the one that was, uh, you know, that was Jim Lawson. So yeah. I grew up with that, and I, I came up to him at a Comic Con, and he, I think I made him feel really old. But uh, but I think he was also very like you know moved by that. And I was just like that was just like that was the Turtles comics that I was used to like his style, and his style actually kind of like influenced me a lot like when I was doing my own comics and stuff. So he's definitely a cool guy. So. Now talking about comics and favorites and stuff. What was your favorite media of the Turtles? Ooh, well, you know, I think as any Turtles fans growing up, like, I was like, I always like was big on the toys. The toys, there were so many characters that didn't make it into the cartoon series that I was such a big fan of that I just like made my own scenarios when I was little. But I was a huge fan of the cartoon like anybody was growing up. Then uh, I had a resurgence and I became like super like like nerd hardcore and I was just like, man, the cartoon, the old cartoon from the 80s was nothing like the comics. And like I loved the new TV series in 2003. I was like, oh my god, they're going back to like a lot of the comic storylines and all this stuff. So I mean, I'm a fan of everything. But uh, that's all. Awesome. But you know what? I, I really love and it stands true to today. TMNT one, the, fr the first movie. Yeah, amazing. Can't go wrong with the first movie. That especially was especially when you see Raphael swearing, you know that's a good sign. So, <laughs> so. And who is your favorite turtle? Raphael. Raphael. Everybody loves a jerk. So, so and, you know, I and well, my favorite color is red. So that was the turtle I automatically associated myself with, and then when I realized it's a comic, they all wore red. I was like, oh, that's awesome. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to a new live action movie. I hope they do it justice. Um, I hope they knew the new uh, TV series that they're working on, Nickelodeon, is, is going to be good. And uh, you know, Kevin, you've been working on the comics pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to read that. So I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, I met I met Kevin and Peter. 
at uh, San Diego Comic Con 2007 when they released the toys, the NECA toys. Was it 2007, 2008? Hey. New York City Comic Con. Comic, sorry, yeah. Thank you. New York, New York Comic Con. Uh, and I got I got mine both signed by both. I I have that in a nice trophy case uh, in my apartment. I wish I wish they would have done more. I see that they, they have the April Neil one. I'm still available. Yeah. The, the mousers. I've got that one. Yeah. But I'd love to get their shredder and their fork that they were showing and stuff like that. There so many that we're just waiting for and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. not getting. And then there was the Playmates toy line of the Mirage Turtles. What? Uh, it was never released. It was never the uh, Playmates. Come on. Yeah, it was on display at New York City Comic Con 2009 uh -huh. at the Ninja Turtle booth. Uh, and there's the Shredder with the removable oh, really? helmet. Yeah. And you're just going, oh, I cool. want that. Jersey, and then right? it never comes out. And you're just, <laughs> what did they do that for? Those bastards. Well, you never get what you want, you know? So. Well, you know, it was the buyout with Viacom that caused them not to come out. Well, yeah, I know. There was a there was, there was a lot of comic book guys that I liked that we were doing the Mirage Turtles, like that, that the Raphael Dark Dark Moon Rising or something like that. It was it a short series with Raphael, and I really loved the artist that was part of that. And I think he was supposed to be the new artist for the new comic book comics. Like, you don't make and because season? of the whole thing, you know, he did it. Uh, but the new comic looks awesome, so uh, I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. So much new stuff. We're looking forward to hopefully you guys get some more shows out and have turtles in it. Yeah. I know you guys did a mini show before and had some turtles in there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually when I did my first, uh, the, I did the face it's portraits. Like, but I, I re redid them for this show with the Japanese writing. Um, oh, speaking of which, one is off the wall. Michelangelo's yeah, gone. So. Oh, good. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, <laughs> I actually am working on a Bebop and rock, rock Steady piece right now that I wanted to have finished for this show, but I didn't have enough time. But that will, I will have prints of that online sometime next week. So, and it's basically both of them like just like uh, destroying little baby turtles. It's like it's called Bebop and Rock City's Revenge. So, <laughs> so. Um, Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, guys. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I hope. Uh, no, money wise, the artists do. Yes. Do they get all the money towards the pieces, or do they get a percentage of it? They get a percentage of it. They get the gallery. The gallery here gets twenty percent, but I mean, twenty percent is very is a, is is not. I mean, I don't want to say it's not, but, but it's pretty pretty reasonable. I mean, the artist ends up getting a lot of the money back. So. And a lot of exposure. A lot of exposure. Art here, people are going around talking to them, interviewing them, yeah, getting yeah. them out there. So. It's worth the twenty percent just to get out. Your, the more your name is out there, the more you're going to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So exactly. Um, no, and the and the thing, you know, the thing, that, the reason I do these shows is I want to spark interest in some companies. It's like, hey, maybe we should like do like a, a, a collected uh, turtles like anthology with all this, all these illustrators, and just like do like a tribute book. They've been doing a lot, a lot of that with a lot of different properties like Street Fighter, Mega Man. All these different publishers, and I, you know, it'd be great to do something like that with Turtles with a lot of this artwork in here. So, so hopefully somebody's paying attention. Internet. <laughs> so then uh, there's a lot of talent, raw talent, in, uh, in a lot of these shows, and uh, that I think would be make a great addition to, to you know, uh, a tribute book. So. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Yeah. It's been a great show. We're enjoying ourselves. Thank you for coming. It's so awesome. It's so awesome. Let's keep going. Well, it's a lot of fun. I, I do find it hilarious. That it's the same spot that I was in Philly last time. Yeah, well, the, like I said, that van, when that van came here, that's what sparked this entire thing. I'm like, I will have my revenge, I will have my turtle show. <laughs> so, so, yeah, these guys lie. They're like, yeah, yeah, we know. So, <laughs> but, yeah, so, but yeah, thanks, guys. Yes. We'll uh, probably see you at future shows if we can make it out here. For sure, dude. Awesome. Right, well, Thank you. <laughs> well, that was Shell Shock, an awesome, awesome art show. We hope to see more stuff like this because it's something where fans can gather and enjoy and express their different types of fandoms. And uh, I'm hoping that we can do something like this again because it's great to see something for the fans to be part of. We'll catch you next time here on Cowabunga Corner when I interview the Shredder. Hi, I'm Francois Chow, and you probably know me as the Shredder, and you're watching Kawabanka Corner.